Hi everyone, welcome to this next episode in the uh, series of videos about building the GT40 replica chassis from our flat pack of tubes kit. Um, in this episode I'm going to put the rear roll hoop on. Uh, this is a, a tricky job and one which I'll do slightly differently to how I would uh, recommend you do it. Uh, I built a jig uh, to hold my roll hoops in place. You'll want to use the um, roof itself. So you'll need to offer the roof up at some point, use the uh, dimensions given in the build manual for positioning it. And then you'll want to strap the roll hoop up into the roof in its correct position and build yourself a similar sort of jig to what I've, what I've got, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so that you can hold the hoop in place while you cut it um, to the right length and fit it to the chassis. Um, so the first thing I'll do is just go through what my jig looks like um, so you can see uh, the sort of thing that you need to construct um, for your own chassis. Right, so as you can see there, uh, the jig that I made basically holds the hoop um, at the right height and it holds the feet at the bottom in the right position. Um, so what you need to do really is either use an offcut of tube or the, the hoop itself with the roof on. And you'll see there's a recess in the roof where the roll hoop fits up into. If you can somehow strap the, or clamp the, um, roll hoop up into the roof in the right place so that you know you've got the right height and you've got the right fore and aft position for it. You can make a little jig like this that will then hold it uh, while you, as you can see that the roll hoop is a little bit too long and it needs cutting back at the right angle to fit onto the chassis. I leave them long because it's almost impossible to bend them and cut the right angle on the thing and get them to the right height. Uh, so it's much better to uh, have them long and cut them back to fit. So the next thing I want to show you is a little tip for getting the uh, feet cut. To so the right as length. you can see, the legs are too long on this roll hoop. And what I've done is I've shifted the jig over to one side so that the leg can run down the side of the tube where it would, where it's going to end up sitting. So now all I need to do is scribe around the tube uh, this plane that it's going to sit at so they get the right angle and the right length. And the best way I've found to do that is to use a steel rule bridging the two and then make a mark in several places. around the tube like so. I'll keep going around. Um, and I can join them up and I put them in my saw and cut the right angle at the right length. And then obviously go and do that on the other side as well. Once I've done that, I can be confident of putting it on the jig and that it's cut to the right length. And just all I need to do is weld it on. Right, so there we are, feet cut and placed on the jig back on the chassis, looks pretty good. Uh, what you'll find is that these roll hoops are never bent a millimetre perfect by the time they get to the feet. Sometimes they're slightly over bent, sometimes they're slightly under bent. Quite often, um, over a period of time, the arms will open up slightly, so you'll find that they don't perfectly meet uh, the chassis in terms of the overall width. Uh, so all we need to do in that case is tack one, or use a reasonably strong tack on one side of the chassis and a clamp on the other side and just pull out or in uh, the roll hoop until it fits nice and then another strong tack on the other side to hold it in place. Um, 
And from that point on, we can go forward and finish the rest of the assembly, put the crossbar in the back stays and door striker plate area. So that's what I'll move on to next. Okay, so the next part of the roll hoop is to put the crossbar in where we uh, fit the seatbelt mounting bosses. Um, so I've cut myself a uh, length of tube, 38mm tube this one. Um, it's one metre and 70 millimetres long. And now I'm just going to do some um, intersected ends so it fits nicely inside the roll hoop. I've already done a video on doing tube intersections, which you can see on the channel, uh, which sort of details the best way of doing it. Um, so I should just go ahead and quickly do that. <laughs> So there's that crossbar uh, cut into the main roll hoop and tacked in. Next thing to do is the backstays and then the four uh, V1 20 by 20 tubes that go along the front uh, and sort of angled backwards to support it all and form the uh, seat back bulkhead. So I'll move on to that next, I'll do the backstays. Okay, so to do the backstays, first thing I've done so I've cut myself um, two lengths of 45mm diameter tube. They've got to be overall 504mm long. This is a 40 degree angle cut. And now we've got to do a tube intersection on this end. So I've actually cut these a little bit over length. So what I'm going to do is mark the 504mm on here and then use my intersection template that comes with the drawing pack you'll find it in the pdf document called cage bending that's in dropbox this template intersection template shows the intersection that you'll have on this backstay against the roll hoop it says here uh, this is the one that you find in dropbox this tube so a 45 millimeter tube with two and a half mil wall meets 45 millimeter tube at 55 degrees this line here needs to line up perfectly with the sort of furthest extent of the 40 degree cut. This line here will be 180 degrees from that point. This point here is where your 504 millimetres needs to be. We wrap that around the tube, mark it on, cut it with an angle grinder and we'll get a perfect intersection. Right, so there it is, roughly chopped out with the slitting disc on the angle grinder. And if you're sitting there saying I'm mad for doing it without goggles on, you're absolutely right, don't do it. I did end up in hospital for three days earlier in my, earlier on in this chassis build from, with a shard of um, steel stuck in my eye. And it's just because I can't find my safety glasses at the moment and I want to get on with this. Um, so. I learn from my mistakes and make sure you wear safety glasses please I'll try and take my own advice um, as of later on today right, so now we're going to clean that uh, cut up and shape it properly using a uh, 80 grit sanding pad get a proper shape on it
So, as you can see, that's getting there. So the next thing we've got to do, <coughs> this is not quite going fully home, we've got to open this. It's always a problem with these intersections. You've got to open this throat up. You've got to take away the material thickness, if you like, to get it to sit down properly and thin it all out in this area. Now this gets a bit nasty with these um, sanding pads. So just take it careful and if you get any damage to the sanding pad, change it. Because once it starts ripping, um, bits start flying everywhere and gripping and it's horrible. So uh, take your time, tickle it away if you need to and use a decent new sanding pad. And uh, there we go, perfect intersection, finish that bit of backstay. So I've just got the other side to do, so I'll crack on with that. So I've got the backstays in, and I've sorted out the other tubes that go on the uh, roll, uh, rear roll hoop bit. So I've got these, there's four 20 by 20 tubes that go across the front here. V1016. Two that go in the middle are 017s, and 015 on the opposite side. We've also got V1019, which goes like so. And then we've got a pair on either side, 020, I believe. And then O21 and the handy version of O19 is O18 that goes on the other side. The specific distances that the O17 tube's uh, got to go in, which we can get, which we can, we can get the distance for the O17 tubes from this drawing O37, which shows the complete assembly of the roll hoop. So basically we're looking at 280 millimetres uh, either side. And actually I've spotted an issue there. This tube V106 should go on the other side and the corresponding one on this side. Good job I checked the drawing. Taking things for granted there. Okay, so I'll get on with putting those in position. And then we've got a plate once we've got these tubes in, go sort of like that, and the door striker plate goes on there, so we'll do that in a bit. Right, so that's got those tubes uh, in position, tacked in. Uh, next thing to do to finish it is to put the door striker plate um, bits on, um, which are basically a four inch, three mil strip, cut off 150 mil long. And there's uh, dimensions showing its placement. Um, on this drawing, which is the 0037, which is part of the um, drop box information. So I shall cut some plates and then we'll stick them on. Right, so there's the two door striker plates. Cut, ready to put on. Make use of the uh, magnetic clamp for this one. These can be a bit tricky to uh, hold in position.
So that's got that tacked on both sides. So that's it. That's pretty much complete on the uh, roll hoop. I've got to put some tubes in the top to sock it in for the front roll hoop, but I'll uh, do that as part of the front hoop when I get around to doing that. Uh, so now it's nearly time to go home. So I'm going to have a big old weld up and then I'm going to stop and I'd recommend you do this too. I'm going to stop about half an hour before I go home just so that if any uh, weld splatter causes a fire or gets anything smouldering um, I'm not leaving it to burn overnight <laughs> while I'm away. At least I've got half an hour to detect any smell of smoke or fire. So I'm going to crack on. I'll see you at the next video. I hope you're finding this uh, useful, those of you that have got the kit already. I uh, hope you're, if you're just interested in building one and maybe buy a kit later on, you're sort of noticing that it's relatively straightforward to uh, build and quite satisfying, and um, that you don't need any particular skills. Uh, even if you're not confident in welding, if so long as you can weld to the point where you can tack the tubes together, you can always uh, bribe a mate or something to come and fully weld it for you once you've got it tacked up okay right thanks for watching cheers